Hello guys and welcome back to another Eat Sleep Box and Repeat video. I'm delighted to be joined tonight by Danny and Elliot. Um, before we get into things, how are you both guys? All good mate, all good, glad to be on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good mate Owen, thanks for having me on mate. Brilliant stuff. Um, so see, within this sort of segment, it's just looking at what's going on in the boxing world at the moment, all the boxing news, um, any fights, that sort of thing. And we'll get straight into it with the, not necessarily news, but the fact Lee Wood, um, on the back of his uh, massive victory over Michael Conlon, um, was linked with the Santa Cruz fight, which would have been huge. Um, that now appears dead in the water and it's likely to be Mauricio Lara towards the end of September in Nottingham. Um, I'll come to you first, Elliot. What's your opinion on the fact the Santa Cruz fight's now dead, um, as it appears, and Lara will likely be the opponent? Yeah, I wasn't that convinced the Santa Cruz fight was going to happen, just purely for the fact that Santa Cruz has spent so much time away from featherweight. I just, there was a part of me that thought, is... <clears throat> I know it was it was I thought it was unrealistic I wanted it to happen but I just I'm not that surprised that it's not happening um I am surprised that if Mauricio Lara's the fight has gone after I'm surprised it's that one just because it's such a dangerous fight and Lee Wood could possibly go after different opponents for more or the same sort of money so I'm a bit surprised like it's an exciting fight um but yeah I thought I, I thought the Josh Rowington fight was was odds on to happen to be honest both with um both Veli Hearn, both British, could have had that fight at Nottingham, the city ground or Ellen Road. I think it could have near enough sold out would have sold a lot of tickets. So that's the fight I was kind of hoping for. But against Michelle Lara, it's still it's still still a very exciting fight. And then Danny, yourself, what do you think in terms of do you think Lara is, is the right fight next? Um I'm not completely convinced it will be Lara next, to be honest. I think when you've seen interviews with her and He's mentioned Lara, but he's also mentioned Kiko Martinez. And he does this trick where he'll mention two or three fighters and they'll like, it'll be the lesser of the two. So if it was Lara, like that's an unreal fight. Like it's probably, it's not it's definitely more entertaining fight than the Santa Cruz fight. But as Elliot says, like an incredibly dangerous fight. Um, Just to touch on the Santa Cruz thing, I think the fact he's still the world champion, the WBA world champion is a shambles, honestly. Like, the belt situation in boxing is brought up a lot, but that's just a sort of prime example. I think everyone sort of knows Lee Wood really should be considered the full WBA world champion. And again, as Elliot said, I never really was particularly convinced that would happen. Um, was it a 75-25 split? The commission, I think, Hearn said. They've been that, yeah. that, but I can't imagine they'll have much joy. So the Lara fight would be unreal. Um, it'd be a proper barn burner. I don't think, I think Lee Wood's got a good chance. I think as much big a puncher as Lara is, he sort of showed vulnerabilities, particularly in his last fight. I think it was on the, I think it was the Chocolatito Martinez card, but um, I have a sneaky suspicion it won't be Lara next, but I hope I'm wrong. I would, I would love to say it. Yeah, I think I agree with Elliot there. And the fact, I think they're missing a trick with the Josh Warrington fight. Um, I think that's arguably the biggest out of the lot of them, especially on these shores. Um, I think it's a fight people will get behind, especially Nottingham versus Leeds, um, two big supports as well. Um, so I do think they're missing a trick there. But all fights we've mentioned there, Kike Martinez one's probably not the most exciting, but arguably an easier defence than the others and the, the safe option. Um, but I would say we'll, we'll see what Eddie Hearn has up his sleeve. Um, moving on next to an interesting subject. Um, KSI was meant to be fighting Alex Wasabi as DAZN's first pay-per-view. Alex Wasabi reportedly has a concussion. Um, I don't know how accurate that is and if that's the true reasoning, but KSI is now fighting Swarms, the rapper. Um, I'll come to you first, Danny. Um, don't really know where to start, so your opinions on that in general. I don't know where to start either, mate. <laughs> I mean, I think the zone are going to like push this influencer boxing quite a bit now. I don't think they'll be the only broadcasters to do so. Um, if, if you just look at, I think we were chatting a couple of days ago, Elliot, and if you just look at the numbers that these bring in, it is hard to ignore. I mean, if you're asking me to compare Alex Wasabi and Swarms as opponents, <laughs> I don't really have a lot for you. I mean, this is going to get like lambasted by the hardcores. And I think from what I've even seen, like your 
what do you call them, influencer boxing fans, um, they aren't happy with it either. I mean, this is it like what is it, twenty quid? I know the Wasabi fight was going to be twenty quid as a pay per view. I mean, I mean, I suppose it is what it is. I, it's not for me. I'll not be buying it. Um, but I don't think you've seen the last of this sort of thing uh, on the zone uh, at all. And I think it actually is dangerous for proper boxing. Uh, if I'm honest, I know a lot of people were sort of you know, deluding themselves, like, oh, they'll. Devin Haney and Billy Joe Saunders will be on the undercard and they'll watch that and then they'll fall in love with boxing. <laughs> like, so short sighted, but that's my thoughts on it. And yourself, Elliot, how do you feel on the situation itself that they're still charging the pay per view price and, and just in general the fact he's fighting a rapper who, by the way, is also his friend? Um, I, I don't have a lot to say, to be honest. <laughs> I don't want to like, go, off and, go off and one. I think it's an interesting point that Danny made, though. Does this event bring more rise to boxing um or not i think that's kind of i'm just going to ask a question in response to you guys because uh, as danny mentioned there was an event with case was it ksi logan paul had billy joe saunders and devon haney on the, on the undercard did that bring more rise to boxing or did it just make youtube boxing bigger because i think that youtube boxing fans like the majority of them are going to continue wanting to see youtubers fight rather than start watching you know boxing on a regular basis on saturday night i don't know that's that's, that's my opinion but I, I i i just i don't think we're getting lots and lots of people um all of a sudden watching boxing on a, on a regular basis they're just still tuning for the next ksi or jake paul or logan paul or the other one if you think as well it's not like it's not the, the the like the art of boxing that they're tuning in for. It's like the beefs that build between these, and they're so heavily invested in the personalities. Like the actual sport is second rate of that. Like yeah, and I, I feel like that's that's it. When you've got one of these fight weeks, the press conference or the weigh-in is just as big as the fight. From what I've seen, um, that's 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 kind of what it's about, and it is what it is. But whether you like it or you're not, it's going to continue to be a thing. But no one's forcing you to watch it. No, like I say, I, I completely agree with your point of although it does bring more fans into boxing, I don't think it's bringing them into boxing as we know it. I think it's more the YouTuber events, the, the TikTok event they had, the influencers in general. I think it should realistically bring more fans into boxing. But like you said, Elliot, with the whole the beef surrounding it, a lot of it does seem forced. Um, so I think with that, it's more the build-up rather than the actual fight. I don't think the people that are watching are too bothered how the result goes. I think it's more the actual build-up itself and what videos they get out of it. But as we mentioned, Devin Haney fought on the undercard. Um, Bob Arum has said um, that if he comes through the Cambosos rematch, um, they'll be looking to make the Lomachenko matchup. I mean, that's... A fight we've spoken about before on the SBR videos. It's a fight many fans have talked about. Um, what do you think on that, Elliot? Do you think it will happen if Haney comes through the Cambosos fight? And is it something you'd want to see? Yeah, hundred percent want to see it. Um, look, you, you hope so. I, just, I feel like Haney's in a position now where it, it's surely only kind of big fights going forward. But you just you don't know just because Bob Aaron. I think Bob Aaron says quite a lot of things whether they happen or not is a different debate so really hope so but wouldn't get ahead of myself not going to get too excited about it um i will see like i think there's a good chance devon haney might move up in weight after the cambosis rematch assuming he wins which he probably will let's face it um he might fancy having a an easier touch fight after going to australia twice um so we'll see. So I wouldn't get carried away with, with what Bob Aram has said. And yourself, Danny, um, do you agree with Elliot or is that a, a fight you sort of see in concrete? Um, definitely not in concrete. Uh, I could see it. Um, I just want to see some top lightweights fighting each other, to be honest, whoever it is. Like, it's madness. I know, I know you saw Haney and Cambosis, but, like, I don't know, was Cambosis ever really considered... A top lightweight I don't know he had the belts but I think you might see it just because I think it was a three fight deal that he and he signed with top rank obviously the first one Cambosis first fight second one's going to be the rematch so I think Aaron probably will look to make a big fight with him um, as I said both under the same promotional banner I'd love to see it like I think Lomachenko's almost like been forgotten at lightweight um, I, 
is he at his absolute best? Probably not against Kome. He looked great. Um, fight before was it Nakatani? Could be picturing that, but he looked great as well in that. Um, so I think yeah, I would love love to see Lomachenko back in there, and I think his legacy is almost sort of being disrespected by for that, like Teofimo Lopez loss, which he did lose the fight, but was that the best Lomachenko? I don't think so. He definitely could have beat Teofimo that night. So him be he and a him versus Shakur Stevenson and them would love to see it. Hope we do see it. I do agree with Elliot again there. I think. If you look at Haney against Kambosos, if you put him in with Lomachenko, even if you put him in with Teofimo Lopez, he's big compared to all these lightweights. He's very, he is extremely big for the weight in the sense of when you look at them, they almost look a mismatch. So I can see him moving up. He will um, move up at some point, definitely. He, I think he has to move up at some point. Um, I'm not 100% on whether he's comfortable at making the weight, whether it's a struggle for him, getting to it, but... When you look at the size of him and, and for legacy reasons as well, he's 100% going to step up for myself. Um, another fight that's been talked about, will they, won't they? Um, Chris Eubank Jr., Conor Ben. Um, I'll leave the floor open if who wants to go first on this one because for myself, I don't see it happening. I think it's all talk using their father's names because of the matches they had. Um, and like I say, floor's open, but personally, I think it's just all talk. You go first, Elliot, mate. Work away. Oh, Elliot, you're muted. Uh, your sign's off, mate. Sorry, mate. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Um, I don't know if it's going to happen. I just think that if you consider Usyk Joshua is next week, I don't think it's going to be announced then. So I think, I think they, they, i.e., Eddie Hearn, Matchroom, want to announce Conor Ben's fight this week. And therefore, if Eubank isn't ready or if he's not signing the contract, I think they'll look to make the fight with someone else, whether that's a Keith Thurman um, or somebody else or someone. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know. So I don't, yeah, sorry to sit on the fence a bit, but I I really don't know. I just, but I think that if it's not announced this week, I don't think it will happen in October. That's my opinion. So we'll see, but I, re I really don't know. I'm hearing, I'm hearing different things from different people. So yeah, I'm really not sure. And then with that one, Elliot, before we go to Danny, do you think Eubank Jr. would be too big for Conor Ben? Um, yes, that would be my um, prediction. I just think fair play for Conor Ben for taking that fight. If that's what he's doing, I understand why. I think if someone's dad beat your dad in a boxing match 30 years ago and you've got the opportunity to fight his son, yeah. I understand why you would take that. Um, however, I just think... Eubank is too big. I think Eubank would actually be okay in making that weight because I don't think I think Eubank makes middleweight easily. So I don't think him dropping four pounds would be too difficult, in my opinion. And Ben, I don't think Ben's a massive welterweight anyway. So Ben at one five six, yeah, lot should work out well for him. So I would pick Eubank to stop him in the middle rounds. Would be my prediction there at this stage. And then Danny yourself, do you see the fight happening? And again, if if it did happen, do you agree with Elliot or do you see Conor Ben um, having a chance? Uh, the exact same thing as Elliot. I've heard so many different things um, at that show in Sheffield. There was saying, "Oh, it's done, signed, sealed, delivered, ready to be announced." And then within five ten minutes, someone else was telling me that it was completely dead in the water. That there was issues over a rematch clause, and that they were looking to make the Keith Thurman fight for Ben. So. With regards to whether it happens, I've absolutely no idea at this stage. Um, I would agree um, with Elliot again that um, if we don't hear an announcement soon, then you forget about it probably for the rest of 2022. Um, with regards to how I see it going, um, since the sort of rumours of the fight happening came about, I've been fairly resolute in picking Chris Eubank Jr. to win and win pretty easily and win however he wants. Um, if he keeps Ben at the end of the jab, I think he would just jab his head off all night. Ben wouldn't be able to get near him. If he decides to have a war with him, he would stop him in rounds, a handful of rounds. Just think the size is too much. Like, as Elliot was saying, Ben is, a, yeah. is small at welterweight, like very small at welterweight. And Eubank, he's been as high as 168. And as I said, I don't think the weight cut to 160 even kills him. I think if it was 157, even 156. It probably wouldn't be particularly pleasant. I wouldn't want to have to try and shed that weight, but he could do it. And whilst it wouldn't be like 
the best, best version of Eubank Jr. Just think the physical attributes and the season he's had, like the level of fighters he's been in with compared to Ben, would be far too much. And I think the odds in the fight are crazy how close they have it. Um, so don't know if it happens. If it does, I'll be having a big bet on Eubank Jr. Yeah, completely agree with both of you there. Um, I do think it's, like we say, it's the legacy of their parents. But really, stylistically, I don't think it's a great matchup at all. I think Eubank, it's, it's the old cliche of he'll just lean on him, he'll just jab him. And I see Conor Ben struggling for the full fight there. Um, and then finally, to touch on, we have to bring it up. The Instagram stories um, from the Gypsy King today, Tyson Fury calling out Derek Chisora for the trilogy. Now, boxing fans realistically do not want to see Tyson Fury in the ring with Derek Chisora again. He's dealt with him comfortably enough previously. Um, Danny, come to you first. What do you make of the call-outs? I've seen he was calling him a chicken and all sorts, saying it'll be the biggest payday of his career. Um, do you think there's any substance behind the call-out? And what do you make of it? I wouldn't be surprised if they don't, have, honestly. Um, I think if you sick beats AJ, that's a very, very likely fight. Like, they're mates now, Chisora and Fury, and Fury's, like, said in interviews for a long time that he would love to, like, give Derek Zora, like, reward him with the fight, which I think just tells you everything you need to know. The first two times they fought, it was a better version of Derek Zora, a worse version of Tyson Fury, and they absolutely, like, beat him handily, both two fights, the second one in particular. So I'm, I'm sure I'm not going to be the only one in saying this. I have absolutely no interest in it. Um... If Chisora was to somehow beat him, that would surely be the biggest boxing upset at heavyweight ever. I mean, I know people tell about Tyson Buster Douglas, but that would be unbelievable. But um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if that happened. And I would sort of treat that in the same vein as like a fight with Thor Bjornsson or Ngannou. I think it's as one-sided as them. Um, and it would have just sort of that novelty feel that where you're going in to watch it just for like a freak show of it almost, as opposed to like a competitive world championship boxing match. And then Elliot, yourself, do you buy it or um, Fury being Fury? Yeah, like as Danny said, they are actually friends. Like, weren't they like drinking together the, the yeah. day after Fury of Dillian White? They were posting it on Instagram, which was what <laughs> four months ago. So, look, they are friends. I'm pretty sure they message from time to time. So, yeah, I think this is pretty staged. Um, I can see it. I can see it happening because they would still both make a lot of money from it. Um, so I wouldn't, it could be a kind of a last fight for them both in a year's time. Maybe I can see that happening. Do I want to see it? Absolutely not. I, I don't think I'd even watch it to be honest. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't rule it out. Fury has said in the past, he kind of wants one more fight with Derek Chisora. And I think that's kind of, that's because he likes him and does see him as, as a friend. So wants to kind of give him that a, a final kind of career payday. So for that reason, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if it did happen. Um, would it sell? That's I don't know. That's kind of a different question, but it'd be interesting because that can you imagine them have like trying to have it at Wembley Stadium and it being like less than half full because no one actually wants to see it. I can see that happening. Yeah. Um. So we'll see. Yeah, can see it happening, but don't know. Look, I just think we all, I think we all know what fight we want to see Tyson Fury in. Um. Next, and it's not against Derek Chisora. Completely agree with both of you. I mean, we want to see Fury against the, the winner of Usyk. <coughs> I don't think we will see that. Well, I think it'll be, if Usyk wins, we don't see it. If AJ wins, I think we see Fury AJ. Yeah. Um, if Usyk wins, I can see him fighting the likes of um, Derek Chisora. Um, like we say, just for the payday, really. The last couple of fights, even the AJ fight, is mentioned he wants so many million to fight. So I think it will just be the give himself a payday, and like we say, give his friend Derek a bit of a send off and a nice payday. Um, but thank you both for joining us tonight. Um, once again, brilliant to sit and discuss the the ongoings of the boxing world. No problem, mate. Always entertaining. Cheers, guys. Good to talk. Perfect. And tune into our next videos, guys. Thank you.